A soft field approach and landing is a type of landing where pilots land an aircraft on runways with unpaved surfaces, such as grass or dirt. Pilots should routinely practice and develop proficiency in conducting soft field approaches and landings properly in the event one is needed to be performed. Soft field approaches and landings are used in many commercial flight operations as well as in general aviation. Prior to conducting a soft field landing on an unpaved runway, pilots should conduct a low approach over the runway to assess the conditions of the soft field runway and notify traffic in the area of their intentions. This is done to ensure safety and situational awareness is maintained for all aircraft nearby and at the airport. While on the low approach, pilots should look for any bumps or dips in the runway so they can avoid landing on them, as well as note the area where other aircraft have recently landed. This can be flattened grass or worn areas on the runway. The reason this is so important is because if other aircraft have been landing in that area of the runway, it should be suitable for landing. If it has rained recently, pilots should also look for any mud or puddles on the surface of the runway, as these can cause issues when landing. Once the low approach is completed, the pilot must make a decision to land or not. If they are landing, they should fly the appropriate traffic pattern and make the necessary traffic pattern calls. To conduct a soft field approach and landing, pilots should conduct the before landing checklist to ensure the aircraft is properly configured and is ready to land. As the pilot approaches the runway they are landing on, they visually look at the windsock to obtain the latest wind information to properly apply crosswind correction inputs. When on the final approach, the pilot ensures they have lowered the flaps to 30 degrees and have established 61 knots indicated airspeed on final, approximately half a mile from the runway. Slightly higher approach speeds should be used under turbulent air conditions. If gusty conditions are present, increase final approach speed by one half the gust factor. They then choose an aiming point to use while landing and maintain the aiming point in the center of their windscreen to descend down to. While making the approach to the runway, the pilot must adjust the pitch and power for the desired airspeed and approach angle that will permit landing within the desired area. Remember that pitch and power work in a relationship, so when one is adjusted, the other will need an adjustment as well. Upon clearing an obstacle, real or simulated, the pilot then initiates a power reduction to begin the descent to the runway to begin the round out. The pilot should set their throttle roughly 200 RPMs higher than idle. In Epic Flight Academy Cessna 172 Skyhawks, this is about 1000 to 1200 RPMs. This extra power is needed to allow the aircraft to softly settle onto the runway surface. Note, when the power is reduced, the nose of the aircraft must be lowered to maintain a constant approach speed. As the pilot rounds out the aircraft and settles into ground effect, the pilot flares the aircraft and ensures that the main landing gear will touch down first. The pilot must smoothly increase back elevator pressure throughout the flare and landing to continuously bring the aircraft's nose up. This allows the pilot to keep the nose gear off the ground to assist in the ground roll and prevent the propeller from striking the ground. The pilot's eye should transition to the left between the window post and instrument panel to allow the pilot to see while the nose is high and gain depth perception. Upon touchdown, the pilot smoothly reduces the power to idle while maintaining elevator back pressure to keep the nose wheel off the ground until the aircraft aerodynamically cannot keep the wheel off the ground. At this time, the nose wheel will smoothly make contact with the runway. The pilot must maintain the elevator back pressure in order to keep the nose wheel light while on the ground roll. The pilot leaves the flaps fully deployed to alleviate weight off of the main landing gear and does not apply brakes until the aircraft has slowed to a safe speed to avoid skidding. While slowing the aircraft, the pilot must maintain directional control and crosswind corrections with the appropriate rudder and aileron inputs. Once the airplane is clear of the active runway and stopped, the pilot performs the after landing checklist. Some helpful tips when conducting soft field approaches and landings are Just like slow flight, the pilot must adjust the pitch and power to maintain a stable descent to the runway while maintaining the appropriate approach speed. Remember, pitch and power adjustments are a relationship, meaning when one changes, the pilot must adjust the other to maintain their desired condition. Do not force the aircraft down to the ground, as this can lead to an unsafe landing. Remember to keep your hand on the throttle during the entire maneuver in the event that performing a go-around becomes necessary. 
When simulating landing on a soft field, ensure that back elevator pressure is still maintained to demonstrate keeping the nose wheel light while landing and during the ground roll, until exiting the runway and crossing the whole short line onto the taxiway. When being evaluated by a progress check pilot or designated practical examiner, the pilot must Maintain the appropriate approach airspeed, plus 10 or minus 5 knots as a private pilot. Maintain the appropriate approach airspeed, plus or minus 5 knots as a commercial pilot. Be sure to like our video and subscribe for more epic content. And while you're here, check out some of our more recent videos and playlists.